Hello, this is Chef John from FoodWishes.com with San Francisco style bagels. That's right, much like the city itself, the surface is irregular, they're a little seedy, but very, very interesting and incredibly delicious. And I'm going to have lots of info on the blog on how these came to be. But for now, I'm just going to show you how to make them. And despite a few different steps, quite an easy recipe. So we're going to start by measuring out some dry ingredients. We need to make what's called a sponge. So I'm going to weigh out some flour. I'm using just regular white bread flour. All right. To that, I'm going to add some dry active yeast and some warm water. And we're going to give that a mix until it's thoroughly combined. And then we're just going to leave that in a warm spot covered. I'm just going to throw a plate on it. And we're going to leave that for 30 minutes until it basically doubles in size and gets incredibly awesome looking. Look at that. It's alive. Literally. So cool. All right. So after you remove the plate, I just want you to stare at it for five minutes. And then we're going to add the rest of the ingredients, which is some salt and the rest of the flour. All right. And then I'm going to grab my dough hook and we're going to need this for about 10 minutes. Although, you know what? I think I'm going to attach it to a machine. That's going to work out better. And it's going to look really wet and sticky when you start. But after a few minutes, it should come together into a nice ball. It should pull away from the sides. And we're going to need that for about 10 minutes or so until we have this. A very sticky, very elastic dough that's just barely firm enough to pull away from the sides. You see that? Now, for one of my favorite parts of all, go ahead and flour your hands and just form it into a nice, smooth ball. So I'm just kind of turning it, rotating it, stretching the dough so the surface is very smooth and any seams are underneath. I'm going to throw that back in the bowl. We're going to go ahead and put the plate back on. I'm going to put that in a warm spot. I just used my oven. And I'm going to let that double in size, which took me about an hour and 15 minutes. But it's going to look like that. Again, so cool. If you don't have fun making bread, you probably don't have fun. All right, we're going to take a spatula and scrape it out of the bowl. That's totally going to deflate it, knock all the air out of it. But that's okay. That's what we want. And then just so I don't waste any dough and all my bagels are generally the same size, I'm going to go ahead and use a scale to divide the dough. So mine came out about three and a half ounces per. I'm just going to form that into a little ball. And then we got to make them bagel-like, which means a hole in the middle. So I just tear the center. Again, my fingers are floured. And we're just going to go around stretching it, pulling it until we have something that looks, well, like a bagel. Or a donut, if that makes you feel better. All right, I'm going to let these rise for a half hour. I'm going to flour the surface generously so they do not stick to this plastic on top. While those are rising, we have to get our water prepared. As you may know, bagels are boiled before they're baked, which gives them that signature texture. And not just plain water. We're going to salt it generously. I'm also going to put in a little bit of honey. I stole that from my friends in Montreal. By the way, as soon as I did the water, I realized my pan's not wide enough to fit the bagels in. So I switched. And yes, thank you for noticing. That is a very shallow amount of water. That's one of the signatures of San Francisco bagels. They're done in a shallow amount of water. And you'll see what that does in a minute. All right, we're going to bring that to a boil. At this point, it's been 30 minutes. Our bagels have risen nicely. Because I floured the top, that plastic did not stick at all. Check it out. Comes off so easily. Of course, I'm kidding, but no harm, no foul. All right, so I removed my plastic without major incident. And then we're going to place those bagels in the boiling pan of water for two minutes per side. And because we're using a shallow amount of water, and because our dough is very moist, and because we let those double in size before boiling, we're going to have some very interesting shaped bagels. And of course, since this is only a couple minutes per side, just do them in batches. Don't crowd them. And once they've boiled for two minutes per side, I want those drained very well. I just put mine on a little cooling rack. Just let them sit there for five minutes and drain and dry a little bit. And at that point, they're going to go on a cornmeal coated sheet pan. So nothing sticks to the silicone. So the cornmeal is not to prevent that. I think it gives the bottom a nice little crust. So it's more of a textural thing. And you may be a little skeptical about the appearance at this point, but don't be. When these are done, they look magnificent and taste even better. And then before they go in the oven, we're going to paint those with an egg wash, which is just a beaten egg. We're going to sprinkle those generously with sesame seeds. Can you use poppy seeds? Yeah, I don't like how that looks. But do what you want. You are the boss of your bagels. All right, so those look awesome. Well, actually, they look kind of weird, but they will look awesome. And once those are seeded, we're going to go ahead and throw those in a preheated 400-degree oven for about 25 minutes or so until the outside's browned, the inside's cooked, and those look awesome. Much different than a traditional bagel. 
So one of the characteristics of a San Francisco style bagel, the inside is going to be almost exactly like a regular bagel. There's just going to be less of it. They're much flatter. The whole point of a bagel is to toast it and put stuff on it. So we don't need all that bread in the inside. I want mostly outside. And this technique is perfect for achieving that. It also fits in a toaster a lot better. And once you toast it, oh yeah. Some cream cheese on there and you are in San Francisco bagel heaven. And while I tend to enjoy these just with cream cheese, once in a while, they make the best sandwich ever. Seriously, all right? So in a way, this is kind of a bagel meets English muffin meets crumpet meets flatbread. By the way, can you call these low carb bagels? No, that's stupid. They're nothing more than just an alternative to your standard fat round bagels. So I really hope you give these a try. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.